you're good to go, Len. Good evening, all. Welcome to the virtual committee of adjustment meeting for this evening. Uh, first item, is there anyone wishing to declare a conflict of interest? By a show of hands, is there anyone? Seeing no one. Next item is uh, approval of the minutes of the September 14th meeting. Can I have a mover and a seconder? Moved by Amy, seconded by Bill. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. First thing I want to do is welcome our new member to the committee replacing Fred Curry is Glenn Yearsley. Glenn, are you here with us tonight? I'm not sure if Glenn's with us tonight. But... Ah, Glenn, me? welcome Thank to the committee. You. We'll Thank give you uh, the rapid introduction tonight as we proceed. Welcome again. Thank you. Um, next item I wanted to make, uh, the committee aware of the appeal that was filed against the committee's decision back in, I think it was September uh, application MV 2320. Does everyone have that copy of that appeal that was filed? Just for information's sake, everyone have it? Okay, thank you. All right, let's proceed. The procedure for tonight will is as per normal. The county planner will give her report on each application. I will then ask for any comments should they wish to comment the applicant. Then I will ask those in favor of the application if they wish to speak. I will then ask those who oppose the application if they wish to speak. And then it comes back to the committee for a resolution. So the first um, application tonight is from Peter Del Grosso. Peter, are you online? Uh, yes, I'm online. Thank you, Peter. Yep. All right, Andrea, it's all yours. Thank you. So the first application tonight is a minor variance. It's MV24-20. And the applicant is requesting relief from the permitted projections into, a, into required yards. Uh, the first uh, request is to permit a covered porch, which would project into um, what we would consider the exterior side yard. And they are proposing um, a 1.25 meter projection on the west corner of the uh, porch and a, sorry, a 1.42 projection on the west side and a 1.25 uh, meter projection on the east side. Um, and I can just give you, I'll just, oh, I, my apologies, I forgot to share the screen. Okay, so you can see where the subject property is. Um, and I'll just scroll down before I go into the next request for relief, I'll just scroll down so you can see that um, the, it appears to be the, the front of the house, which is uh, falls within the exterior side yard. And so the applicant is proposing uh, a covered porch into the exterior side yard. Um, the next request for relief that the applicant is proposing is to permit an exterior landing and retaining wall to the basement level of the, of the uh, single detached dwelling. And it would project 1.52 meters into the rear yard. Uh, the committee will notice that in the comments that were provided by the chief building official that uh, there isn't a category for that uh, relief with respect to um, um, a landing in the rear yard. And so the, the applicant is basically requesting that relief, but the, um, so to create relief ultimately to allow for these stairs into the downstairs. Um, so, and just for the committee's information also, uh, I'll show you quickly on, on this map, it's probably more clear, but uh, similar requests for relief have been granted on both this property as well as this property. And uh, it's just simply based on the fact that uh, they're corner lots. And as you can see, that metal lane goes on a slight curve. And so just to accommodate the design of these dwellings, uh, the applicants in each case, and um, I believe in both other cases, it was, uh, it was the developer that applied for the relief as well. And uh, it's just simply because of the, the uh, configuration of the lots and then the designs of the, of the dwellings. 
uh, the subject on the subject property, the applicant is proposing to build a single detached dwelling. And I showed you the building elevations before. Uh, staff have uh, reviewed the application and the building department has indicated that they have no concerns with the requested relief. Uh, it's considered to be fairly minor and, uh, and it's also would be in keeping with the area. Just her. Um, with respect to the, uh, the character of the area. <laughs> Um, the application was also sent out to the public and we did receive a letter of concern from a neighboring property owner and the neighboring property owner indicated that they had concerns with uh, the nature of the dwelling being um, being that it would be so large on the subject property and, and that additional relief would be required. Um, and I believe that letter has been attached for the committee's uh, consideration. Staff generally are supportive of the application. We don't feel that uh, the proposed covered porch will impact sight, la sight lines uh, in the area. That's the main consideration, that it's, it's not going to impede any traffic or, or create safety concerns with respect to traffic. Uh, we don't have concerns there. We also don't feel that it'll affect uh, the dwelling encroachment, won't affect uh, the normal maintenance of uh, the city's uh, street. Um, and it and it also doesn't affect any sort of, in our, um, in our opinion, it doesn't affect any sort of grading drainage. Uh, there's adequate space for parking and uh, the proposed dwelling is meeting all the other relevant setbacks. So in, in light of our review of this application, we'd recommend that it be given favorable consideration. Andrea, Peter, you have a positive plan report. You need not speak unless you wish. Uh, no, I think Andrea said it all uh, exactly what I was gonna say. Thank you. Thank All you. Right, thank you. Is there anyone online wishing to speak in favor of the application? Is there anyone online wishing to speak against the approval of the application? Hearing none, it comes to the committee for uh, resolution, including the condition that's attached. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved by Howard, seconded by Glenn. Any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Peter, I think there's a 20 day uh, waiting period. Yes. And your application has been approved. Thank you so much. Have a great Thank evening you. and be Thank safe. You. Thank you. Second application tonight is for Calvin Cruz Ventura, 18 Douglas Street. Andrea, if you can go ahead, please. Is the is the applicant online? Calvin, are you online? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Andrea. Okay, so the next application, I apologize to the committee. I just realized that I forgot to uh, give the address on the last property. So I, um, our committee chair has given us the address for this property. It's uh, 19 Douglas Street. Um, and the applicant is proposing to reduce the minimum setback between the projection of, um, of a covered porch and the front line, front lot line from 3.5 meters to 0.3 meters. And that would facilitate a 3.3 or a 36 square foot uh, porch on the subject property. Uh, for the committee's information, uh, when staff were, was review, when staff were reviewing the merits of this application, it uh, we came across um, some previous records um, indicating that on the single story and a half um, single detached dwelling uh, that was constructed originally in 1870, there was originally a front door and a front porch, uh, exactly where the applicant is proposing to build the front door and the front porch. Uh, based on its, um, for safety reasons, as well as aesthetic purposes, the applicant decided to remove it when they purchased the property. And, uh, and since then they have applied to reconstruct the front porch in the same general area. Uh, just for the committee's information, the original front porch, I think that there's a, I'll just actually show you the, I think there's a, a drawing in here. So the original front porch was actually 2.1 meters in width and 1.8 in length, which was 3.8 square meters in area. And the applicant's proposing one that's slightly smaller. So it's 1.8 meters in width and 1.8 meters in length and 3.3 square meters 
um, in area. But for the most part, it's, it's generally about, the, about uh, the same as what was existing. Uh, staff reviewed the application and have no concerns. Uh, as you can see, neighboring properties have dwellings that are fairly close to Douglas Street as well. Uh, staff are satisfied that it will not, uh, the front porch will not imp impact sight lines either. Um, and that, as we said, it was, it's already in keeping with what was, a, which, what was originally on that property. Um, the property is zoned R2. It's, it's a development that's in keeping also with the zoning. Um, staff are satisfied that uh, this also won't have an impact on the maintenance of Douglas Street and, uh, and that the relief is fairly minor. It also won't affect grading or drainage and uh, parking is being provided on the other side of the dwelling as, as the committee can see. Uh, the application was circulated to the public and we did not receive any, any negative, negative uh, comments or concerns from, uh, from the public. So in light of our review, we'd recommend that this application also be given favorable consideration. Thank you, Andrea. Calvin, you have a positive planning report. You need not speak unless you wish. No, I got nothing to say. Thank you, Calvin. Uh, is there anyone online wishing to agree with the planner's report or concur with the planner's report on this uh, application? Hearing no one. Is there anyone online wishing to oppose this application? Seeing no one goes to the committee for a resolution. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Moved by Bill, seconded by Jennifer. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Calvin, I think there's a 20 day waiting period, but your application has been approved. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you, Calvin. Uh, third and last application is Jeff Jarvis. Jeff, are you online? Yes, yeah, so I'm online. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Jeff Jarvis, 499 Crestwood Court. Andrea, go ahead. Thank you. So the final application tonight is for MB 26-20 and it's for 499 Crestwood Court. The applicant is proposing to permit a reduced exterior side yard of 1.2 meters, and that would facilitate the construction of an accessory structure um, in the exterior side yard. Uh, for the committee's information, the subject property was originally um, created as two separate parcels uh, through the plan of subdivision, which was approved back in 2008. Uh, this was uh, a block on a plan of subdivision and this was a lot and the block was uh, to serve for infrastructure purposes. I believe it's related to stormwater, ease, stormwater. Uh, since then the city sold this portion uh, or sorry this block and uh, it has since been added to this lot or 499 Crestwood. Um, and there were easements established for the stormwater management. Um, since then, the applicant is, is now requesting relief to permit the accessory structure. I'll just move down here. Oops. Uh, to build the accessory structure in that exterior side yard or that's that small block that has uh, since been added to the lands. Um, the proposal is to construct an accessory structure that is 27 square meters in area. And then just for, for reference, um, the maximum size for an accessory structure is 75 square meters or 10% of the lot area. So the applicant is, is well below uh, what is permitted in the area. And they're just simply requesting relief from, from the exterior side yard. Uh, staff have reviewed the application. The building department indicated that they are supportive of the application and uh, that the easements have been established and the location of the shed will not affect uh, the stormwater um, sewer. 
we circulated the application to a number, uh, or sorry, the application was circulated to the public. And as the committee is aware, a letter was received, I believe it was this, this afternoon, um, with respect to the application. There were a number of concerns raised by the neighboring property owner. One um, of the concerns was that potentially they had concerns that the properties had not been consolidated. It's our opinion that the, the properties uh, share a PIN number um, and they are for the purposes of development, uh, a single a single lot. And, uh, and so the building department would be comfortable issuing a building permit for uh, an accessory structure on this property. Uh, the property is owned R1. Building a, an accessory structure in the R1 zone is supportable. Uh, the application is meeting, or sorry, the proposal is meeting all the other relevant provisions. And uh, staff are satisfied that uh, the proposed structure will not impact sight lines. Um, and staff are not, con or yeah, staff do not have any concerns relating to graded, grading, drainage, um, or other, other, other concerns relating to um, the zoning provisions. There's uh, adequate parking, um, and it's not it's not exceeding the maximum lot coverage for structures on a property. So, in light of our review, we recommend that this application also be given favorable consideration. Thank you, Andrea. Jeff, you have a positive planning report. You need not speak unless you wish. No, nothing to add. Thank you. Anyone online wishing to speak in favor of the application? Anyone online wishing to speak against the application? Seeing none, we have two letters. I think one is from uh, Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Loverink. Does the committee receive that letter? Their address is 436 Lakeview Drive. Do you all have that letter? Everyone has it? The other letter is from John Bell. I think he's a neighbor across the road. This is an extreme, is there another letter? Sorry, and Alicia just handed me another letter. This is from Michael and Sheen Poole, 440 Lakeview Drive. Does the committee have that letter? Yep. You do, okay. There's another letter from uh, uh, Mr. Bell across the way, and it's a very long and detailed letter. We don't have time to have Alicia read the entire letter. She's going to try to capsulize his comments for the benefit of the committee. But does the committee have his letter and the addendums that he sent in today? You all have that? Yes. All right. We're going to try to keep this as brief as possible. Normally, if we were in uh, chambers, and this came to us, I would allot him five minutes. So I'm going to likely have to cut off Alicia after a while because it, it does go on and I don't want to keep the committee on unduly. Um, is the committee fine with that? Everybody happy? All right. All right, Alicia. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have, as uh, the chairman suggested, received three pieces of correspondence speaking in opposition to this letter. The first piece of correspondence is from Mr. John Bell and reads as follows. My name is John Bell. I am the owner and resident of 444 Lakeview Drive across the street from the subject properties. Having received the application, the land registry documents and the comprehensive review of this proposal by the planning department, I appreciate the opportunity to offer my comments for the committee's consideration. I would like to begin with the observation that harmony is based on respect. And while that adage was meant to apply to marriages, it's equally ap applicable to neighborhoods. And should that harmony, whether vocal or visual, be threatened by either Either the action of the residents or interpretation of authorities, it seems reasonable for those who are impacted to request relief. It is with that spirit that I submit the following. 
In this case, the registered owner of the corner lot 32 on Crestwood Drive is applying for a variance to permit development of the adjacent narrow block 27, of which he is also the registered owner. Block 27 is a separate interior block with 100 some square foot frontage on the north side of Lakeview Drive, which abuts to the rear property line of lot 32. The application and planning department assessments, however, treats block 27 as an extension of the exterior side yard of corner lot 32 on, Quest on Crestwood, rather than as a separate frontage block on Lakeview Drive. In my opinion, this treatment of block 27 is invalid and without authority for the following reasons. The two properties, Lock 32 and Block 27, were consolidated under a single pin in 2008 for land registry purposes at the request of the owners under instrument C033126. While both the application and planning report address the request as a single residential property, it is my opinion that this pin consolidation does not have any concurrent impact on the designated uses of these respective properties or change the designation of Block 27 from an interior lot on Lakeview Drive to an extension of the external side lot of lot 23 on Crestview Drive, and that any development requests or evaluation must address the properties according to their separate designations. Since Block 27 was registered on instrument 00134-1874 and reserved in 2003 as part of a plan 41R7102 and designated for future development infrastructure purposes, note not in 2008 file number 32T-02001 as per the planning department report, it is my belief that any development or interpretation of Block 27 as an external side yard rather than a separate block fronting Lakeview Drive would contravene the intent of that plan. The designation is important to me as it is my as is further my understanding that the designation of Block 27 for future development infrastructure rather than as parkland like other blocks in Plan 41R7102 was intended to ensure that any change in designation of Block 27 would be subject to a review as part of a future plan encompassing the development of the adjacent government property and with consideration of the impact on the neighborhood. In particular, the impact on facing residents on the south side of Lakeview Drive directly across the street from Block 27. And it was with that exception that I personally purchased my property. As such, I submit that any applications regarding development of Block 27 prior to a plan request encompassing the adjacent lands should either be rejected or if accepted for review, evaluated as single interior lots facing Lakeview Drive, just as they would be for another owner of Block 27 having no adjacent property interests. Should, however, the committee proceed with the review of the current application as an external side lot variance, Either now or in the future, I offer the following comments in response to the planning department evaluation of requests. I note that the City of Woodstock has published guidance consistent with Section 45 of the Ontario Planning Act, which requires any application for a minor variance from the established zoning standards to meet four tests. The guidance states, minor variances may be granted provided that in the opinion of the committee, one, the request is minor in nature, Two, the request is desirable for the appropriate development or use of land, building, or structure. And three, four, the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw and the official plan are maintained. I would first comment that the key word in both acts of the application are minor. The act does not authorize major variances to be approved regardless of their desirability or compliance with other zoning standards and only authorizes the consideration and approval of variances that are minor. Similarly, variances are not authorized based solely on variance being minor, but also on an evaluation of the remaining three criteria. With that understanding, I address each of the criteria. One is the request minor in nature. The report does not address this requirement and never once comments on the size or appropriateness of the variance, despite the fact that the request, the size request to reduce the required exterior side lot width from 4.5 meters to 1.2 meters rep represents a reduction of 3.3 meters or a variance of 73.3% from the bylaw requirement. I suggest that this does not meet the test of being a minor variance and should eliminate the request from further consideration. The report does consider the variance to be minor in the context of section F, development desirability. While desirability is one of the four factors to be met, which is addressed below, I again submit that desirability is not a valid basis to determine that the minor variance test has been met 
and that the degree of actual variance must be addressed, referring to committee decisions regarding residential property variances for new buildings in the past two years, I have yet to find any approval or even a request of anything of the magnitude of this variance, even when they only have minor neighborhood impact like an interior side lot or rear yacht variances, let alone requests for external side lot variances which are highly visible and impinge on and impact the character of the neighborhood. Two, is the development desirable? Section F of the report begins with the conclusion that the request of relief can be considered minor and desirable for the development of the subject property and appears to support the conclusion on that basis that the shed can only be built if 73% of the variance is granted. While the assessment may have concluded it is desirable to construct the shed on a constrained property never intended for development, even while the constraints of the block were known when the applicant purchased the block and without assessment of the impact on the neighborhood, I can see no justification for assessing the requested relief as minor. Rather, I would hope the decision to reduce the width of an internal external side lot would be based on the impact of reducing the degree of separation between the shed and the road and the sidewalk, and that the committee's decision would consider the inadvisability of establishing a precedent that could be cited by any corner lot owner who wishes to build a shed closer to the road at the rear of his or her corner lot to the detriment of the neighborhood. Desirability is further addressed with the statement that planning staff are satisfied that a consistent building setback will be maintained as there are no other dwelling accessory buildings to the west of the property and the proposed building will be enclosed by a decorative iron fence. It is unclear to me how the conclusion of a consistent building setback could be reached given the acknowledgement that there are no other properties to the west. I would suggest that should single lots be developed in the west in the future plan, that the existence of a 1.2 meter setback from this property would be inconsist an inconsistent setback and exactly what the bylaw setback is intended to avoid. The third paragraph of the desirability section is of the utmost concern. The development of the lands on the north side of Lakeview Drive and the maintenance of zoning setbacks standards will have the most impact on residents facing it from the south side. To evaluate this request within the context that the subject property is the only residential lot among the north side of Lakeview Drive between Van Considered Avenue and Crestwood Court, and to conclude planning staff are satisfied that use of the lands for single detached dwelling and proposed storage shed is consistent with the surrounding land uses and building types, and the character of the area will not be impacted with the construction of a short storage shed, ignores the reality that the area is a very open park-like space and the construction of a large standalone outbuilding literally against the road over 100 feet from any other structure directly across the street and in the direct view of homes on the south side of Lakeview will severely impact the character of the area. Given the above, I strongly submit that the development of Block 27 is not only not desirable, but it would be detrimental to the current character of the area and to the future future development of any residential lots to the west and as such does not meet the desirability ca character. Third, is the general intent of, and purpose of the zoning bylaw maintained? Section E of the report addresses the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw and acknowledges the intent of the exterior side yard provides provisions is to provide for consistent building setbacks along a street to minimize the physical impact of buildings and structures along the street and further to provide adequate sight lines for vehicular and pedestrian traffic. I submit that a variance to enable the construction of a garage size structure 24 feet long and four feet from the lot line would be in direct opposition of the state stated intent to minimize the physical impact of buildings and structures along the street. Further, should the future development of the surrounding lands result in the establishment of a corner directly west of Block 27, the presence of a garage size structure would be in direct opposition to the stated intent to provide for adequate sight lines and for vehicular and pedestrian traffic. As such, I submit that the proposal does not meet the general intent and purpose of the bylaw. I would further submit that the general intent of the exterior side lot width requirement is of equal significance to that of the front yard depth. While side lot width and rear lot setback can be reduced without significant impact on the character of the neighborhood, the exterior side lot depth needs to be compatible with the front yard depth such that any corner, the side line of the corner structure does not significantly impede on the sight line along the front of the house along the block. 
As such, I submit that the intent of this bylaw was primarily to protect the characteristics of the neighbourhood and any variances to the external side lot width or front yard depth be granted only in exceptional circumstances, particularly in well-designed registered plan developments, where variances can have significant impacts on the neighbourhood environment and their property values. I submit that this application does not represent an exceptional circumstance for variance. The subject lot 32 was developed within the last year and there was sufficient room to build a storage shed just as the neighbor did on the adjoining lot. Block 27 where the shed is proposed and the variance requested was purchased knowing that it was not designated for development and had insufficient depth to prevent to permit development within bylaws. I submit that to grant such a variance now in these circumstances would also be in contravention of the general intent and purpose of the whole bylaw process. Four, is the general intent and purpose of the official plan maintained? As I currently have no understanding of the Woodstock official plan, I would only comment that the bylaw established within the framework any such plan address not only the safety and security needs of the residences, but also the vocal and visual constraints necessary for the quiet enjoyment and satisfaction of the residents. And I look to the committee to assess any variations to those requirements fairly to both the applicants and the residents. I thank you for your time. I have a second piece of correspondence from Michael and Sheen Poole from 440 Lakeview Drive. Our comments regarding MV2620 primarily concern the aesthetics of the area. It is clear this neighborhood was well planned to be an attractive and inviting area in which to live and to visit. The corner lot in question currently gets attention due to its unique layout comprised of a regular lot consistent with neighbors and an irregular quadrilateral lot, which is inconsistent with all neighborhood properties. The irregular portion of the lot is clearly visible from three sides. We feel the addition of a large shed on the irregular section of this lot will stick out like a proverbial sore thumb, detracting from current aesthetics. We also feel that the existing aluminum fence will do little to mitigate this. If the variance is approved, perhaps a requirement of a row of cedars along the roadside would soften the visual impact. Michael and Sheen Pool, 440 Lakeview Drive. And finally, uh, to the committee through the chairman, I have correspondence from Paul and Kim Louverink uh, from 436 Lakeview Drive. We hope the that the City of Woodstock Committee of Adjustment carefully considers the ramifications that this minor variance will have on the integrity of the Alder Grange subdivision. We do not agree with the position that the proposed structure will be desirable, and we feel that the character of our neighborhood will be negatively impacted. We feel this application should not be approved. As quoted in the application, it is the opinion of this office that the requested relief can be considered minor and can be considered desirable for development. As residents of 436 Lakeview Drive, we disagree with this statement. The applicant is requesting a 73% change from 4.5 meters to 1.2 meters. How can an adjustment of 73% be considered minor? We are concerned that this could set a precedent for all corner lots in the future of this subdivision. Please see the attached photo, which is looking at the property from Lakeview Drive, and they have attached a photograph which was included in the agenda. <coughs> Excuse me. The irregular lot layout of 499 Crestwood Court will make the proposed structure highly visible and prominent to homes on both Lakeview Drive and Crestwood Court. This shed will be obstructive and does not conform to the character of our neighborhood. The current aluminum fence will not conceal a prominent structure of this size. We are also concerned that it could be used to store an automobile, rendering this proposed 37 or 3.7 meter times 7.3 meter structure more of a garage than a shed. In conclusion, we believe that this application should not be accepted. This proposed structure will have a negative impact on our neighborhood and could reduce property values in the surrounding area. Thank you in advance for, your, for considering our comments. Sincerely, Paul and Kim Louverink of 436 Lakeview Drive. Okay, the committee has heard the letters. Can I have a resolution to uh, accept the recommendation of the planners to reject the uh, recommendation of the planners or to adjourn another meeting? Who wishes to move? Do you have comments first, Mr. Chairman? No, I need a resolution first. 
Any resolution? I see uh, Bill. Are you, what are you proposing, Bill? I'm just going to un I can't hear you. I propose that we reject, reject the application. Is there a seconder? Seconded by Howard. Now, any comments from the um, committee? Bill, any comments to, to your resolution? Uh, I think the lot layout is, is very unfortunate and that should have been part of the park and not be allowed to be sold as, as an addition to an existing lot. And I think the, uh, the points that were mentioned by the people concerned are incredibly valid. Thank you, Bill. Any further comments from the committee? I wanna ask Andrea a couple of questions. Howard, go ahead. I tend to agree with the uh, comment that of the sore thumb application that the building will eventually look like a sore thumb to the area. And I have wonder, I keep wondering about the minor variance um, 73% to me doesn't seem to be a, a minor variance. Can we go for to Andrea for any comments? Andrea? Um, so I just want to comment on probably, sorry, through the, the chair to the committee. I want to comment on the, the reference to the the larger parcel being, sorry, I'll just share my screen here so we can take a look here. Um, so people are suggesting that this is a, um, a park and, and it is in fact uh, the Omacra site, which is owned by the province. Um, so it's, it's, it's not a park, it's not for public use. Um, so I just, I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, and then with respect to um, the neighboring property owners comments relating to the, um, the, the four tests of a minor variance, we, yes, yeah, so of course we did, we did uh, consider the four tests and that's what uh, the section is at the back of, of the report where we go through each test. Um, I understand that, that there's a 73% increase in, um, in the projection. However, I would note that we don't necessarily take into consideration um, the actual number, it's more the impact that it has. And so we, we consider more the intent um, of those provisions that, that the relief is being requested from. And then we, we consider what the effect is on, um, on the relief that would be potentially granted. And so in this case, um, you know, we feel that the biggest thing with with this um, with projection, sorry, with projections into exterior side yards, is with respect to sight lines and uh, traffic safety. Um, in this case, we don't feel that there is going to be an issue with sight lines. We also didn't feel that uh, it would impact um, the normal road maintenance of Lakeview Drive. Um, and yes, although it is the only, ex, ex, sorry, although it is uh, the only accessory structure um, in the exteriors or along Lakeview Drive, um, we didn't feel that it would have that great of a, of a negative impact on the property. I mean, for that matter, the, the neighbor could, um, like, I, I mean, sorry, we sh we've uh, supported other applications for accessory structures and exterior side yards in the past before. Um, in fact, there was at one point, there was one that had already been constructed. And so it was a, it's a, I mean, although we don't condone, condone accessory structures being, um, being constructed before there's a permit or before relief is granted. In that case, it was a good example of, of you know, the committee and staff being able to see it already there and what the impacts were. And, and you know, in that case, we were satisfied that it wouldn't, uh, it wouldn't have an impact. So along the same lines, we're satisfied that this one also won't have a negative impact on, on the neighborhood. Thank you, Andrea. Back to the committee, any further comments before we vote on the resolution? Seeing none, I have a, a um, Resolution I'll read to the committee that the City of Woodstock Committee of Adjustment not approve the application MV 2620 submitted by Jeffrey Jarvis 
for the lands described as lot 23 and block 27, registered plan 41M187, parts 12 and 13 of registered plan 41R7210, city of Woodstock, municipally known as 499 Crestwood Court, as it relates to number one, the relief from section two, I'm sorry, six decimal two, table 6.2 zone provisions to permit a reduced exterior side yard to 1.2 meters to facilitate the construction of an accessory building storage shed brackets, whereas the zoning bylaw requires a minimum exterior yard of 4.5 meters. Subject to the following condition, the registered relief shall only apply to permit the construction of an accessory, accessory storage shed of a general size and configuration as so, shown on plate 3A of the report. <coughs> Excuse me. Does that sum up the, and the reasons given uh, to me by Alicia here, number one, requested variance is not minor in nature as the proposed accessory building will not be located in an isolated area of the lands and there are grading and draining issues or access concerns with the proposed location. Reason number two as to why we're turning this down, the requested variance is not desirable for the appropriate use of the land as the proposed development will not allow the applicant to make use of land for an accessory building and further the proposed storage shed is not an otherwise permitted use within the R1 zone. Reason number three, the requested variances do not maintain the general intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw as the proposed storage shed would be clearly secondary to the main residential use of the land. And number four reason, the relief does not maintain the intent and purpose of the official plan as a dwelling and accessory structure are a form of low density residential development contemplated by the official plan. So we're, we're sort of going to have a recorded vote, so to speak. Those members concurring with declining this application, please raise your hands. We have Bill Bess, we have Howard Pye, we have I'm, I'm only seeing two on my screen. Who else do we have? Opposing the uh, application. When Bob Southern is he in opposition. Glenn, are you opposing? Yes, I am. <clears throat> All right. Jennifer, you're opposing or not? No, no. I'm not okay. opposing. So we have four members agreeing with turning down the application. We have member one member who's not agreeing to turn down the application. All in favor of the uh, resolution, raise your hands again. One, two, three, four. Bill, you're opposing as well. Motion is carried. The application is turned down. Um, Jeff, back to you. You have the opportunity to resubmit a revised application at some future meeting if you wish, or of course you can appeal the decision of the committee. That is up to you. Thank you. All right, let's go for an adjournment. Anyone wishing to uh, propose an adjournment? We have Bill Bess, seconder for adjournment. Howard Pye, all in favor? <laughs>